Alrighty then. Okay, we are set and ready to go. I'm going to start the record button. So welcome to our Women Leaders of Love Own Your Worth Wednesdays. I am excited to have this conversation today about surrendering your agenda. <laughs> oh my goodness, how many of us are control freaks and want to, to control everything and how it happens and what it looks like? Oh my goodness, that's always been my story in the past. And it's so much fun right now to be in a state of trust, to to be able to surrender everything and say, yes, you know, I trust the universe has my back. I trust that there is something divine that is magnificent happening. I trust that it's all happening in divine timing, right? So we're still in the month of January, and this is when we set our goals. We've been talking about that over the last couple of weeks. And so I wanted to, to really dive into this conversation because a lot of times when we have a vision for ourselves, we, we have this vision that is very tight and the way we think it should be, and then it gets in the way of what can truly be created. So I want to really look at that today and say, okay, what do I need to surrender? And, and here's why, because our minds, of course, are very limited in what we think we can have and what we can do. And this is why we do our Own Your Worth Wednesdays, right? Because we're trying to own our worthiness so that we can really let the unlimited unlimitedness of the universe flood in. So if we're not in that full state of worthiness though, and if we're not completely trusting, we're going to limit what the universe can give to us, what God can give to us, whatever you wanna call it. So we wanna surrender. We wanna say, okay, this or something better. And I'm sure if you've ever practiced any of the law of attraction information, you know that this or something better gives it an opening of saying, okay, I have a vision of this, but I'm open to receiving even something better, right? That's kind of cool, isn't it? Because then you take off the shackles. I'm gonna let some people in real fast. Hold on one second. I see Daniela's joining us and someone else is joining us. So when we say this or something better, we, we release we let go and say, okay, universe, you take over, which is what makes life so much fun. That's if you've ever heard any of my talks and sharing my story about the miracles that have shown up. Oh my goodness. The miracles that have shown up in my life are things that I never even imagined. I never even imagined that, you know, like being in New York and on my book tour and saying, I want to go see a thoroughly modern Millie or hairspray if it's for the highest good. And then boom, the next day meeting somebody at the New York Health and Racket Club. And not only did I get to go see the play, but I had the best seats in the house and the girl that I met took me to their steakhouse. Okay, so it was, I took off my limitations and I surrendered and then a miraculous, huge miracle showed up. So when we look at what we're wanting to create, because it is the new year, right? We're still in January. This is the last January. I'm probably going to stop talking about this as of today. But when we look at this, this idea of what we want to create in the new year, we have to be willing to say, okay, I surrender. When we control, when we're trying to make it look a certain way, what happens is, is that as I said, we put on our blinders, but we're also going into resistance. So remember, if you're wanting to create something, it runs a vibration, say right here. If you're wanting to match that, you can't be in resistance down here. To be able to create, your energy has to match what you want to create. So if you're in resistance and you're trying to control, then you're gonna call your energy down. Now that doesn't mean that you can't create boundaries. You can't say what you want. I mean, this is not about being a doormat. This is not about suppressing yourself. This is about being very clear on what you want. This is about really speaking it, getting clear with bullet points about this is what I want to create in my life, but then getting to a place of saying, I don't have to have it look this specific way. I don't have to have it on my timing. I don't have to have it be, you know, with certain people or, or it has to be very, you know, it has to be boom, 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 boom. It doesn't have to be that way. When you add this or something better, you're saying universe take over. 
universe take over. I want you to take over and show me what I can really create. See, we are the creators of our life, right? We, cre we co-create with God and the universe but when we are holding on, it's as if we're saying, get out of the way. I'm the one in charge. What I have found over the years is that if I'm trying to be in charge all the time, it doesn't really work. If I will allow myself to be in the divine flow, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, if I, if I allow myself to just literally let go then I get into the divine flow. This is why we talked about on those days where you, you, know, you may get guidance to do nothing. You do nothing because you're in the divine flow. You may feel like you're not moving forward, but you're actually in the divine flow when you let go of the controls. So I want you to think about today, what is your agenda? <laughs> okay, what is your agenda? Is it that, you feel like you're wanting to attract someone into your life and you've got this deadline and it's got to be this way, I'm going to invite you to let go, okay? I'm going to invite you to let go. Is it that you feel like your business is supposed to be at a certain point and at a certain time frame and it's got to be looking this way? If you do that, what you're going to do is you're going to limit yourself from really receiving the abundance that you deserve, okay? You want to release and let go. It's, as I said, okay to have the vision of what you want to create, but when you add that this or something better, you take off the shackles. I really want you to think about that. I want you to think about your agenda right now. And what are the chains that you've got attached to your agenda and why? When we have an agenda and we have it in our mind that it has to look a certain way, it has to be in a certain time frame. often it's because we're trying to prove our worth. Think about that. When you feel like, oh, I've got to reach this level or I've got to have this in my life, we're trying to show, it's all like our egos are taking over and saying, oh, this is what you have to do to feel successful, to feel joyful, to feel happy. But because you're in resistance, you're never going to actually have that experience of joy and inner success. You're going to always feel like you're fighting it. When you surrender, just in the state of surrender, what you're doing is you're, you're saying, I trust that I'm enough. I trust that this vision that I've been given is true and that there's something even more magical than I could have ever imagined. I trust that the universe has got my back. Now think about that. I know when in my life, when I've tried to control things, it's because I didn't feel worthy at my core of really creating what I wanted to create. I didn't trust. See, when you feel that you're not worthy, you don't trust. Now, a lot of people will say, well, I'm worthy. I feel worthy. But then the, the testing point is, but am I surrendering? Am I trusting? That's a good gauge to see if you've really owned your worth. Am I surrendering? Am I trusting? Am I trusting divine timing? Am I trusting that my needs are going to be met, that I'm going to thrive as I stand in my truth? Am I trusting? So I want you to think about that. Are you trusting in your life right now? Have you surrendered your agenda? So we're gonna do our meditation on this conversation today. We're gonna to dive in and Hopefully, just through this conversation, you're already thinking, okay, I can see what my agenda is. Maybe you're wanting someone to like you. Maybe you're wanting someone to tell you that you're enough. I mean, I don't know what your agenda is. It can be something very minuscule, and it could be something really large. I have no idea what yours is. Only you can get honest with yourself and say, okay, I do see I have an agenda here. I can see that I'm performing and I'm trying to control and I'm ready to let this go. Okay, so we're gonna dive into this 
in this meditation, see what comes up. We're going to surrender and we'll see what shows up. Okay. Are you ready? Let me see if there's anybody else that's trying to get in here before I go any further. Okay, cool. So I want to invite you right now to dive into meditation with me as we look at our agendas and surrender them. So I want to invite you to just close your eyes and take a deep breath, really breathing through the nose, holding it, and releasing very slowly. Let's breathe in again. Hold it. And release very slowly. I want to invite you to keep breathing this way, giving yourself permission to get fully present right now. You can even wiggle your toes. You might want to pat your legs and show, do your shoulders a little bit. Get in your body. I want you to get here and be fully present. Breathing into this. Now visualizing, opening up the crown of your head like a camera lens. We're going to take a moment to get grounded. And as you visualize opening up that camera lens, I want to invite you to call in the light of trust the light of abundance, the light of worthiness. Bringing in this light, it can be any color you want it to be. It might be gold, it might be pink and sparkly, whatever you want it to be, have fun with this. And as you call in this light, feel it coming into the crown of your head and washing all the emotional chaos that's in your mind. Imagine it washing down through your face and into your neck, really relaxing into this. And bringing that light on down your arms. And out your hands. Let that energy go out your hands. Letting everything go. This is a great place to start surrendering. It's just letting everything go. All that chaos that's been sitting in your head. Allowing it to drain down your arms and out your hands. Breathing into this. And then bringing that light from your shoulders down into your chest. You're taking a moment to get grounded. Letting it come down into your chest and then into your ribs. Continuing to breathe through your nose, holding it, and then releasing. Allow that light from your ribs to come down into your belly. Again, we're bringing in the light of trust, the light of abundance, the light of worthiness. We're bringing that in. And we're now sinking into the hips. Letting that light move down your legs. And out your feet, dumping everything down to the center of the earth. And now visualizing that you are so full of light that your energy field around you, your aura is Full. It is filling up with this beautiful light. It's pushing anything down to the bottom and down below your feet into a big column all the way down to the center of the earth. We're letting all the energy that is stuck and ready to start breaking away and letting go. We're going to let that go down to the bottom of your aura, under your feet and down this column of light to the center of the earth. Imagine that you are so full of light. And your aura is so full of light. And now it's even washing the outside of your aura. Think of it as like you've been having this cheesecloth that is wrapped around you and it makes everything kind of fuzzy and how you see the world. And I want you to imagine that now that is washing away and the light is surrounding you. So it is inside of you in every cell of your body. It's in your auric field around you. And it's on the outside edges of your aura. 
imagining that aura is literally like arm's length all the way around you and even a little bit further out. You are so loved and so protected in this energy. Feeling the trust growing, feeling the abundance growing and the worthiness. Just feel that energy saying, yes, I trust that I'm enough. I trust that there's enough abundance for everyone. I trust that I am worthy. Breathing in this energy feels so good. And now let's call in that little five-year-old kid inside of you, that little girl, or if there's some men here with us, that little boy, I want you to imagine that little girl inside of you coming up onto your lap and say hello to her. Just say, hi, I love you and I'm so glad you're here. And now I want you to think about the agenda, the agenda that you've been holding on to. Maybe it was your intention for the new year or maybe it's an agenda you've had for a long time about something you wanted to create in your life that you feel like you've been controlling, that you've had this vision that you're holding on so tightly and you can feel the resistance. So I want you to think about what that is. And it may be something, as I said earlier, a very minor, just check in with yourself and say, what agenda am I holding on to? Another way you can do this is you can look at your inner child and ask her, what agenda are you holding on to? You may get pictures in your mind. You may have a feeling. You may hear words. Maybe just be a knowingness, whatever works for you. But what is the agenda that you're holding on to? If you get stuck, I want you to imagine opening up the crown of your head again, breathing and surrendering. What is the agenda you're holding on to? And now ask why? Why are you holding on? so tightly. Why are you holding on so tightly? Really get honest with yourself. Are you holding on so tightly because you feel like, well, if I meet this agenda in the way I see it, that I'm gonna feel safe? Are people gonna love me more? Are, gonna, are people gonna think I matter more? What is your story here? Did you feel like you had to meet an agenda as a kid? Did you feel like your parents expected that of you? Are you trying to please them still and yet they have nothing to do with this picture in reality? Are you trying to prove your worth to them or to someone else, maybe a teacher, maybe your spouse, maybe your kids, maybe your friends. And hopefully now, You can get a clear picture of why you're holding on so tightly.
I'm going to invite you right now to look at that little kid inside of you, a little five-year-old, and say, you know what? You are enough. And you don't have to hold on anymore. Because whether this happens or not, I'm going to love you. I love you. The universe loves you. And as you say that, I want you to feel the chains of this agenda falling off of you. I want you to feel the energy shifting right now. As you say, I surrender this agenda. I don't need to prove my worth. I don't have to, to push. I don't have to shove. The universe supports me and nurtures me. And I want you to imagine that you're taking this whole agenda, whatever it is, you can see it like a contract or however you want to see it. And imagine putting it in a rose, a giant rose, and the head of the rose is like a vacuum and put that agenda in the rose. And now imagine all the energy that is connected to this agenda moving into that rose. So I want you to just feel anything that's been creating stress from this agenda in your body. I want you to feel that energy releasing. Maybe it's in your shoulders, maybe it's in your neck, in your lower back. Let that energy move into this rose. Breathing into this. And let's imagine moving that rose out into the universe and blowing it up like confetti, sending it back to the universe with love. And as you're releasing that energy, you're continuing to feel the energy of trust and abundance and worthiness pouring into your body, into your aura, and even into your grounding below your feet that goes to the center of the earth, that big column. So feel this energy. Feel the energy letting go. And I want to invite you to look at that little kid inside of you and say, I give you permission to create this vision that you have or something better. I give you permission to surrender this vision. And now imagine the vision that you've had for yourself that you release the agenda, you've released the energy that creates an attachment that keeps it where you're holding on because that keeps you from creating it. And I want you to just imagine that this vision that you've had for yourself is so beautiful and you're celebrating that either it or something better has happened. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I celebrate that this or something better is coming in person. Perfect divine timing. Breathing into this. I want you to just really feel the energy of this that you're celebrating. You were so excited that you surrendered, that you allowed, and that you received what was divinely intended for you. Breathing into this. Let's take one more breath. And when you're ready, you can come back into this space. So I want you to think about what I said at the end. I said, surrender 
allow and receive. That's really, really key here. We are so trained to push, to shove, to control that we go into resistance. So there's no surrender. And when you're in that tightness, you're not allowing, okay? You're not in that space of going, okay, I can be in the divine flow and I can allow perfect timing. And you're definitely not being receptive, okay? So you want to just surrender, allow, and to receive. Surrender, allow, and receive. So think about this. The universe is working with you, right? So you might have been working on something for a long time, trying to create it, and you feel like, oh my gosh, it's never going to happen. So you hold on that much tighter. But what you're doing is is holding on to the resistance. And that old saying, what you resist persists, right? So if you can go into that state of what we just did, where we surrendered it and we looked at, you know, why am I holding on so, so much? So, I mean, there's that, there's this neediness in it, right? So if there's neediness, then there's an attachment. And when we have attachments, we have a hard time creating. So when we surrender, we're saying, I don't need this to make me joyful and happy and feeling like I'm loved because I'm doing that work for myself. This is just the icing on the cake if it happens, right? This is just this is just the beauty of co-creating. So as you surrender and you continue about your life, you continue to love yourself, you continue to treat yourself as if you matter, if you're in your negative thought processes, you clean them out and you come back to that space of of being in a, a loving, joyful, kind and gentle space to yourself, then as what you do is in that state, you move into a state of receptivity. And that's when you feel worthy. That's when you feel as if you're enough, you put yourself in this high vibration and now you can receive what is intended for you, your divine path in perfect divine timing. So really want you to take that in surrender, allow, and receive. Anybody have any questions about that? So now's the time we're going to open up for questions and for any coaching or healing, if anybody would like some, some support right now. Um, if you are on our Zoom part, portion of the call, you can raise your hand. There's a little icon that says reaction. If you're on your computer at the bottom, I don't know what it looks like on your phone. I guess it should look one day. And you uh, click on that and then it says raise your hand. Um, and I will watch over here for anybody who's raised their hands to ask questions. Also, I just wanted to give a heads up for those of you who are watching on Facebook and Instagram. If you have a question, I will come to you at the end of the call and see if I can uh, answer anything that you might have. But if you want to be a part of the Zoom call where you can actually ask questions and be here with us in this private area, then what I want to invite you to do is get my free Worthiness Quotient Breakthrough Bundle. It's at terrybrit.com forward slash leaders and you'll get my women leaders of love ebook explaining why us loving ourselves and breaking the good girl rules is so important plus three guided meditations to help you really step into your purpose and again you can get that at terrybrit.com forward slash leaders and that's t-e-r-r-i-b-r-i-t-t.com forward slash leaders eileen i can see you are there and i'm going to ask you to unmute are you there? Oh, if you don't know how to unmute, you'll see at the bottom, if you're on your computer, and again, I'm not sure where it is on the phone, there's a microphone and it has a slash through it. What you do is you click on that and it will unmute you. So see if you can find that. And on my screen, it's in the okay. video. Hey. Hi. <laughs> it also comes up with a little, um, uh, like a cartoon box saying unmute, but I didn't notice that I was trying, I kept trying to do the unmute icon and it wasn't unmuting. And then I saw the, the little cartoon and I, I got it that way. Good, well, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for being here. How can I help you? Um, I'm in this situation now that is, uh, I'm, I'm standing up for myself. I, I had to turn over my social security check for this other organization to pay my bills while Another organization um, helped me with the um, first month's rent and, and, and uh, security deposit. Okay. They have pulled some things that I, I just, I cannot believe this has happened. 
they paid for the wrong bills. They, I have a, a post office box. They went and made one up and went to the post office in the town they're in and paid them. I said, well, that's very interesting. My post office box is in this other town. And the number, because I said, what, what's the number of the box? And they said, 67. I said, that's the amount that I have to pay by December 31st. Anyway, make a, a long story short, I have storage in Hawaii and storage here. Well, if we didn't have COVID, I've already had my storage back from Hawaii, but that threw a big um, thing in the in the soup. Anyway, um, so they they tricked me. They didn't pay the storage. I got a phone call January 5th saying, um, you have until midnight tonight to pay. And I'm like, they didn't pay? No, they didn't. And then they let it go until last week. And it was going into um, pre-auction. I was freaked out. I've never had that happen. And and then also I found out, so she calls me up in the morning and says, uh, you have three days to get out of the apartment. That's what I understood her to say. And and um, it's a different organization for the apartment that I'm in now. Anyway, make a long story short. She, um, she said, you have three days to get out. And I'm thinking, I just got in. I can't get everything out of here by myself in three days. And um, she says, just let your storage go. And I said, I'm not letting it go. I have stuff in there that I want. I have new things in there. I'm not letting it go. I said, um, why can't I pay for it? I'll get a job, a, a part-time job, and, and be able to pay for it then. And she said, well, I'll call the other organization and ask them. And, and uh, I look at the phone cause she, later because she never, and she said, I'll call you right back. She never did. She's at the other organization. She's using their phone. So what's this all about? And, and then on top of it, so she's going to pay for, for the, um, with her credit card because you have to do it right away. She's going to pay for the storage in Hawaii. And, um, I never heard anything about my local storage. And then I, I come to find out that, that uh, she paid for two months. So I, I went and I called Social Security and asked for my Social Security check back, pay it to me, which I got it, which I'm really grateful for because I thought it would take longer than it did. And um, I need, well, I've been working on the strength of myself, standing up to her and saying, I'm sorry, I can't work with you people. You've lied to me. You've not followed, you know, you, you wait until the last minute when it's going to auction. And then you say, so it puts me on a spot. I mean, it, that's some strategy they used. So I want to get out of that, away from them. And eventually, uh, um, I, I don't know how I'm going to pay for the rent for next month. They'll pay for the February one because I'm not telling them until after after February's rent is paid. And then from there, I'm either going to have to move everything out or they'll have a, a payment. I understood they had a payment plan, so that may work. Mm -hmm. But there's this little transition that's that's the difficult challenge. So what is it that you would like my support on? I mean, I'm really sorry that you're going through all of this. Oh, my goodness. You know, okay. I, let me first say this. Yeah. When anything is happening that is difficult, it's hard to go here. But, you know, I, I mean, I've been so ill in my life that I didn't know if I was ever going to be able to function again. And the whole way I got through it is I kept saying thank you for the gift. Mm. Because it took me deeper into feeling like, okay, if I... So what happens in our energy, and you may already know this, but just for those who don't, I'm going to say it. So your, your mind has beliefs, right? Especially your subconscious mind, which runs about 95, 96% of your life. And we, so we have beliefs that we don't even know are there. And sure. those, those beliefs create feelings, which then create a vibration. And whatever vibration you put out is what you attract to you. So when something crappy is happening, I look at it and it took me a while to be able to get to this mentality, but I mm -hmm. look at it, I say, thank you for the gift. What are you showing me that oh. I need to do to love myself more? So oh, I look at, go ahead. 
No, that's good. Yeah. I didn't think. Yeah, because what happens is that it takes you out of victim mentality and into empowerment mentality. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you think about everything in my life, even this woman that you're dealing with, we are in spiritual agreement to walk this, to do this. And so she's playing her part. And now I have to look at what am I to learn for this? And you said partly that you're standing up, right? You're saying what you need to say. So maybe you needed somebody to give you a cosmic two by four to really take a stand for yourself. Mm -hmm. So if, if it were me in your situation to shift the vibration so that you can go from here to here, because you know our goal is to always get into a higher vibration so we can attract higher vibrational things to us, I would start going into gratitude. Okay. I, and, cool. and so what I would do is I'd say, thank you for the gift. And I'd say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What are you, you know, what is she trying to show me? And then I would do my retrieving the gift of love process. And what I do in that is I look at the little kid inside of me and I say, okay, what's hurting? What is this mirroring to you? And you let the feelings come up. Okay. You let the feelings bubble up and you let them take you back in time as far as you can go. And you can even say, I want to go back to the feelings of what is this triggering? Because that's how you get into the subconscious mind to see what the belief is. So as you get further and further in there, you may remember something as a child where maybe you didn't feel like you were being heard by a parent or you know something like that. It could be, you're going to have to do the work to really get in there and see. But you can ask your inner child, what is the belief? Once you get there and you really let those feelings bubble up, and you go underneath the feelings and go as far back in time as you can, you ask that little girl inside of you, what is the belief you're holding on to that this outer situation is mirroring to you? Okay. And yeah. by doing that and releasing the belief, because if it's creating pain for you, it's not the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. you're going through a huge spiritual awakening right now, Eileen, I can see it. I can see this huge spiritual awakening. And what it feels like energetically is you've got this gray around here. Okay. Mm -hmm. and there's light, there's more light down here, but there's gray here. It's like you're being in your head. And it's almost as if you're saying, you know, what did I do to, to deserve this? And I don't even know if you're saying that, but that's kind no, of. No, not, no. In fact, they're a Christian. Both of them are a Christian organization. And, and I'm like, how they never even apologize for all the mistakes they made. And I'm like, I cannot be around this energy. I, I'm, you know, I just got to break it. And I went to my lawyer friend and said, am I do some, doing something illegal if I break it and say, no, I'm, I'm getting taken back my social security check. You guys screwed it all up. I've lived for eight months on the streets without having to, I had no problem paying my bills just couldn't afford an apartment and and absolutely what you said because i've been working with with some other things of of holding an intention and and um i, I didn't even think of the gratitude but when you said go back in time ask your limit i didn't even have to ask her it came right up it came back to the time when i was a child in the bronx before five years old, and my mother called the orphanage and said, I don't want Eileen anymore. Come and take her away. And she used to tell me that kids in an orphanage would have water and stale bread to eat. That's all they had to eat. So I was afraid to go to an orphanage. But this has been bothering me my whole life. And I've done therapy on it. I've done, you know, amazing things. But there's like here's another challenge okay and i'm not i'm not against it i don't hate god i just i just talk to my spirit guides i talk to god i talk to jesus and and i say i'm not giving up on this i'm just this is another thing just help me get through it okay so let me and, help you through this for a second okay let's talk yeah. so i want you right now to look at that little girl at five years old before you were five when your mother said that to you and I want you to ask that little girl, what is the belief you took on when your mother said that about the orphanage? What is the belief you took on about yourself? And see what she says. Tell me what she says. Nobody wants me. Yeah. And is that the truth? 
Oh yeah. No. I mean, let I... No, let me ask you this. Do you want that little girl? Of course I do, yeah. Okay. So there goes that lie right out the window. You want that little girl. And I want you right now to look at her and say to her, I love you and I want you. I want you. Your guides want you. Jesus wants you. The universe wants you. I want to give you another thought, Eileen. If you weren't wanted, you would not be here on planet Earth. Wow. Well, that's an amazing thought. That's an amazing thought. So you have to think of the human race as a big puzzle. And every person makes a part of the puzzle. If you're yeah. here, if you're here, it's because you have your piece of the puzzle and you're wanted. Because if you're not here, that piece of the puzzle is missing. You are spirit first, who is playing your part. You, whether you come into contact with someone and you just have a simple conversation, you came into that person's space for a reason. You are right. here, you are here because you want it. Okay, so that's the conversation now is I want you to imagine all that energy of I am not wanted. And I want you to imagine that you are putting it in a giant rose right now. And I want you to imagine that you say I command this darkness to leave right now because I am wanted. And I want you to imagine looking at that little girl next to you going, you are wanted. Okay. And I want you to imagine even that energy in the foundation under your feet that says I'm not wanted is leaving all that family stuff. Because if your mother said something like that, somebody said that to her. Okay. Yes. So this is a generational thing. So I want you to imagine that that family crap is moving from underneath your feet and it's moving into that rose as well. Okay, I want you to imagine all of that. And I want you to imagine all of this guilt and shame that you have been holding onto for a lifetime because you believed you weren't wanted. And so therefore you thought there was something wrong with you or you were bad or whatever the beliefs were. I want you to imagine that that blanket of guilt and shame is coming off of you and it's coming off of that little girl and you're putting them both in that rose. Okay. okay, we're putting it in the rose, I like them. In the rose. Okay. And I want you to imagine now we're gonna send this rose out into the universe. We're blowing it up like confetti. We send it back with love. And now we're gonna do a soul retrieval. And I want you to imagine the part of you that you separated from when you took on that belief that says, I'm not wanted. I want you to imagine that part is coming in from the universe. And what I see is being wanted. What I see is being heard and seen and valued and loved. And I want you to feel that energy coming into the crown of your head and moving into your body, all the way down to your toes and your fingertips and filling you up. And I want you to imagine that little girl inside of you filling up with that same light and she is jumping up and down with joy, okay? She is jumping up and down and you were looking at her and you say, from this point forward, I am with you, I'm loving you, you are wanted, you matter, and from this point forward, you are my appendage because I'm going to take care of you. And that's what you're doing right now, Eileen, when you stand up for these people, you're taking care of this little girl and you don't even realize it. So now you're gonna do it consciously, okay? Mm -hmm. You're gonna start having these conversations with this little girl every single day about how much you want her and how much you love her. And you're going mm -hmm. to take a stand for her. You're gonna call in your guides. See, a lot of people will talk to their guides but they don't have this relationship with this inner child. And it's the, chi it's the relationship with the inner child that takes us to the subconscious mind that allows us to move into our worthiness. 
Mm -hmm. So I really want you to make this your exercise. I'm grateful. Look at, look at already. Look yeah. at already just this conversation and this healing that's happening right now. If you hadn't been having this crap with this woman and you wouldn't have brought it up in this conversation right now and you wouldn't be seeing that, wait, as a kid, I decided I wasn't wanted, but I yeah. am wanted. Think yeah. about that. So already there's a gift. Yeah. Can you, can you receive that gift and say thank you for the gift? Like really say to the universe, thank you for this woman who's been playing her part because from this day forward, I am going to take a stand for wanting that little kid inside of me, for loving her. Mm -hmm. That woman has played an amazing part for you. <laughs> yeah. I know it doesn't feel that way, but when you can start looking for all the gifts, it's like, I remember this one time I was coaching this woman through a divorce and I said, I want you to imagine your divorce as a Christmas tree, <laughs> which was a real like, oh, I have, this is a stretch, right? <laughs> and I, I wrote about this in my book, The Enlightened Mom. And uh, so we, she visualized it and, and I said that each gift is a present under the tree. Well, we kept doing this deep work. We were going months and months and months and she was going through arbitration and all this stuff. And and, um, and she says, well, what, at what point do I quit looking? And I said, when you've unwrapped all the gifts. Well, when she went yeah. in for that first meeting with the, I think it was the mediator or whatever it was, and her soon to be ex, she told me, she goes, Terry, she goes, I felt so neutral. I wasn't grasping, I wasn't holding. I gave myself a voice. She said, this whole process has brought me into this place of power. Mm. And so she then could release the Christmas tree because the gift was done. So mm. that's what I want to invite you to do. And anybody else who has something going on in your life, just keep asking for the gift. What's the gift? And let it take you to the feelings down below, to the belief that is being mirrored in your daily life, that whatever's happening. So does that help a little bit, Eileen? Absolutely. That, that was key. That was really key. <laughs> And, and the funny part about it was I can look at that woman who I was really upset with her because she didn't even apologize. There were like four things that they did that were way demonstrated. I don't call people stupid. I really don't. But at this point, I was like, this is incompetence. What is going on here? And they're supposedly helping other people. I don't want to have anything to do with them. And, uh, and when you said, ask for the gift, I'm like, that's exactly true. Because I couldn't see it at that point in time. I was so upset. And then I was in shock when the other woman called me and said, you had three days to get out. And I'm like, what? And, and, and oh, my God, I just, this just makes total sense. And, and, and I'll, I'll give you another, another little thought, too. When they said three days, because you said three, three, you know, three days. So three is the, the spiritual symbology of three is expressing yourself, giving yourself expression. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah. look, pay attention to the signs. Okay. Pay attention yeah. to, you know, what is the outer world showing me that I need to do to love myself deeper, to move into unconditional love? Because remember, it's when we move into unconditional love for ourselves and stand in our truths that we raise our worthiness. Yeah. And so that's what you're being asked to do right now and you're doing it so awesome <laughs> thank you thank you, you so much and eileen i want to read something to you Anne wrote um in the chat she says eileen you sound so strong love your inner child and recognize the belief of not being wanted send you some love she's sending you some love so thank you Anne, for oh, doing that you. all right Anne? So go ahead that's her middle her name Anne. uh-huh that's my middle name. Oh, see? <laughs> so well connected. Already. <laughs> Yay. I'm so excited for you. I hope you'll come back and join us on these sessions and let us oh, know how it's definitely. going. And I do want to add one thing. Um, I, I was raised Christian and I still have a strong faith in Christ and, and Mother Mary. I wasn't Catholic, but I mean, they're like part of my, my guides right. that I talk to every day. But one of the things that I've seen um, in the Christian, in any religion, 
is if that if you feel like you're really needing to perform for God and you feel like you, you know, like you're, there's a performance, right? That mm -hmm. it, oftentimes it's very hard to acknowledge when you've made a mistake. Mm -hmm. And because there's this sense of I need to be so godlike, but really what Christ was showing us is to embrace our humanness. You know, I, there was one point in my life that everybody kept giving me crosses. I'm like, why is everybody giving me a cross? And so I meditated on it. And the message I got back was stop crucifying yourself. Uh, yeah. So, so I think a lot of times when we're in a religion and we have these rules about how we think we're supposed to be, that we right. crucify ourselves. And if we crucify ourselves, then we can't acknowledge when we've done something wrong or made a mistake because then we have to acknowledge that we feel there's some badness inside of us when it really is, has nothing to be, do with being bad. It's just, I made a mistake. But a lot of people yeah. like making a mistake with being bad. And, right. and so sometimes, so just recognize that this woman has stuff going on that she can't acknowledge her humanness. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm going to ask you to, um, I'm going to lower your hand and I'm going to ask you to mute yourself. Or here, I can just mute you. Thank you, Eileen, for being here. And, Did I do it? Um, let me see. Did it do it? Yes. Okay. And, and then let me see if anybody else had a question. I see some more stuff on the chat. So um, Eileen Sydney said, well done for standing up for yourself. Remember you are forced to be reckoned with and all things are possible with the right attitude, energy and application. Yay, exactly. So Jane said, um, <laughs> <you know. laughs> so Jane said, it, is it also linked with mercury retrograde where more issues pop up? Well, it definitely, could be part of that, Jane. You know, if you aren't familiar with Mercury retrograde, folks, it's when it Mercury shifts direction, and and so Mercury is the planet of communication. We are in Mercury retrograde right now. I think we started it a, a week or so ago. It usually runs like three weeks, and I think it happens four times a year. I can't remember. I try not to get into involved with it. Um, but oftentimes it affects communication, it affects travel, it affects cars, like cars break down, your washing machine breaks down, things like that. And, um, and so, yeah, I guess it could, Jane, it very well could be. But again, you know, you have to look at all of it as, okay, so this is part of the divine plan that Mercury retrograde is happening right now. And there's all these issues. And if I'm not neutral, if I can't go with the flow, then I have to look at myself and say what, what's being triggered. Because when we raise our worth, when we're owning our worth, we have to do the inner work to go into the subconscious mind to clean out the triggers. And it is those triggers that keep us in a reactionary state. So we want to be in a state of neutrality, right? We want to just look at things with love and compassion and, and recognize that this is just part of the human dilemma. <laughs> I was looking for the word there, the, 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 the dilemma. <laughs> it is a dilemma at times, right? So it could be part of that. Let me see what else everyone else says. Um, okay, Daniela said, beautiful meditation. Would love to hear your wisdom about trusting myself when I can trust men. Surrendering is probably a part of it too. So Daniela, what I would say is um, trusting myself, then I can trust men. So first off, you want to ask yourself, why can't I trust men? I would be looking at little Daniela and asking her, you know, what hurts inside of you? We always want to bring compassion to the situation and say, what's hurting that feels like you can't trust people. And a lot of times we'll project something into our current situation that's really from our childhood and that, you know, we're, we're associating something that really has no relevance to something that was very painful. So again, I would look at that and say, what is this? Where is this taking me to? Let those feelings of mistrust come up. Let them take me back as far as I can to the youngest, you know, your youngest age that you can remember. And even if you can't remember, you'll be surprised sometimes of things that will pop up. And then you can ask your inner child, what hurt? What, you know, because something caused you to mistrust. And, and so you were probably hurt by a man 
and that is being projected now into um, your re current relationships, or maybe you don't have a relationship, I don't know. Um, but so you look at that and you say, okay, so what was hurting then? Now, regarding your trust within yourself is such a good part of the question that you asked. When that little kid inside of you is needing for the man to, to, to be the end all be all, right? Ever, well, you know, because if you're not trusting them, it's like, oh, I need you to be a certain way. It is because you're looking for that man to fill you up. So when you build a relationship with the little kid inside of you, she starts trusting you to love her because it's the love we're looking for is really here. It is inside. The, the relationships outside of ourselves are the icing on the cake. Oh yeah, I love myself enough. So now I have a beautiful dynamic relationship that is being mirrored to me. Remember your outer world mirrors your inner world. So when you love, and I'm, I'm always looking like this because I'm looking at little Terry. So when you're talking to that little kid inside of you and you start building a daily relationship with her, asking her what she feels, what she thinks, when you give voice to that, when you express it, she now trusts that you are loving her and protecting her. Now she doesn't have the need of a man to do this for her so much. I can tell you, I used to have major trust issues with men and I'd been burned a couple of times. Um, it was hard. Then when I, with my late husband, who I was married to for 17 years and the beginning of our relationship, oh my goodness, I had huge trust issues. What I recognized is that I wanted him to fill me up. I wanted him to make me feel loved. And I was so afraid that he was going to leave me because I just always had the sense that I was going to be left. And I think it goes back to when I was a little kid and my dad, who I was really connected to, started working nights and I was in school during the day. So I didn't see him much. And there was this feeling of abandonment. Um, so there was that. But I looked so much for the men in my life to fill me up, to make me feel acknowledged and loved because I wasn't doing it for myself. Where my relationship with my late husband changed is when I started loving little Terry. I was meditating one day and all of a sudden she showed up and I heard, you know, get up and write, this is the beginning of your book. That was my first book message sent. And that's when I started building a daily relationship with her. I now talk to her. I've been over 20 years, yeah, it's been since the late 90s, so well over 20 years, I have made that little girl my appendage because she now trusts me to love her and that I don't need a man to fill me up. I don't need the outside world to fill me up. There's so much relief in that. There's so much joy in that because I know that if say my husband, if he decided he needed to have an affair, we would work through as much as we could, but if it didn't feel right, I would let him go and I would trust now, I'm in a state of trust that there was something better, more, a better relationship, which, you know, I can't imagine. I mean, we have our issues, but we have a great relationship. I would trust that there was something even more magical showing up. So I can say that because that little girl inside of me knows the laws of the universe, that whatever vibration I'm holding is what I'm going to attract to me. And the more I love myself unconditionally, loving that little girl inside of me, giving her permission to stand in her truth, the higher vibration I'm going to hold because I'm in unconditional love. And because a high vibration says, yes, I am worthy, then you're going to attract things that are amazing to you. So they do go hand in hand. Your lack of trust with men is because you don't have a dynamic relationship with that inner child. So there are several things you can work on there. As I've said, go back, look at where the pain comes from. What is the belief you took on as a little kid? It feels like a little kid. And then start building the relationship with this little girl inside of you so that you can really feel that love. Um, if you haven't taken my worthiness quotient course, that's what the whole course is about. It is about really diving deep within to look at the beliefs that are keeping you from loving yourself and standing in your truth to, so that you really become a master manifester of your life. So if you want to check it out, you can go to terrybrit.com forward slash worthy and um, you'll see the landing page. And then if you want to hear my whole story, you can go to terrybrit.com forward slash webinar 
And um, it's a free webinar. It's my worthiness quotient, claim your crown, lead a life you love masterclass. And it tells my story and why loving yourself is so key. It goes really into depth of, under, you know, of explanation and lots of cool stories so that you can understand why it is so important. So I hope you'll check it out. And I hope that answers your question, Daniela. Uh, let me see if there's anybody else on here. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, Anne says she wants to say something about the course. Um, Anne, you can um, lower, you can raise, you can uh, unmute yourself yeah. if you want to. Hey, how are you? Hey, uh, I had a very tough day, but uh, I'm trying to switch now. And um, I uh, was um, moved emotions when I heard Eileen, and it's a bit... Uh, a similar uh, feeling that I had. But I wanted to say something about the course. Um, I'm taking it for a couple of weeks now. I'm doing it very intensively, but I take my time and go back. And uh, Sunday night, I wanted to, to hear something. And I think it was uh, that I had to go to session three lesson three mm. and then I did it and it was about a label and, um, then I saw that five-year-old standing in front of me with that uh, awful label and I saw so that it that it it doesn't was that it was not right that the child was so innocent and the label was so bad, and and I I really feel that that it it was wasn't real, mm. and a lot of uh, beautiful names came, and then I remembered that you said that you had to celebrate and to thank for the healing. So I went to the mirror and I said all the beautiful names to myself, and then oh. next, next day morning, um, whole my my whole life, uh, um. I, I, it feels like I have been living in a very terrorizing environments mm. uh, and that I wasn't allowed to exist. And so I always had to perform and, uh, but it was a very self-destructive behavior that I had and that I couldn't stop. And then Monday morning, I was sitting at a table and I felt that I was going to switch to performance. And I, it felt like doing too much my best. Mm -hmm. And then I, I thought, but Anna, you, you don't have to do that. It's okay. And uh, for the first time, I, I felt that I, I could be who I, who I was. And that Yay! I, yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I I, uh, I said to my doctor, I had to go to the doctor. I said, I didn't think it was possible that this ever would happen. And now it happened. <laughs> oh, isn't that amazing? I mean, so what she's talking about, you guys, is um, there's a there's a part in the Worthiness Quotient course called Flipping the Switch on Your Labels. And if you have a label, like I had the label of being mean, I had a label of being a procrastinator. Um, I had so many labels, but your labels are gonna make you feel guilty or ashamed of yourself, which are the two lowest vibrations. So they're gonna keep your worthiness really low. And so I take you to this process to look at your different labels and then flip the switch on them to see the truth. And what happens is, is when you flip the switch and you see the truth, all of a sudden that label's blown out and you say, oh my gosh, this is who I really am. And your worthiness skyrockets. Well, what happens is, is when we're performing, trying to win love and approval, trying to get it right, do it right, pushing hard, whatever your performance looks like, oftentimes it's because we have labels that we're trying to prove that we're not bad. Like earlier, I was talking about the woman the religious woman and I said you know she may not be able to apologize because she doesn't want to acknowledge that she made a mistake because then it, therefore it makes her feel like she's bad so she's got most likely a lot of labels that she's holding on to and so she you know she's in her mind she can't acknowledge that she's made a mistake but what you said Anne is that you're recognizing through this shift 
like, oh, I don't have to perform. And you stopped yourself. Yes. Is, that, is that right? Yeah, it's, it's true. Uh, yeah. And I wouldn't think it was possible. But then uh, I was sur surprised because I had an awful um, experience at the pharmacy. She, she, and it, she, she, she was not kind. She made me pay uh, 26 euros too much. And I think she did it on purpose. And then I went, but I stood up for myself and uh, in a good way, I think. Then I, I uh, went home and I took a small uh, road and then there was a, a truck that blocked me. I think, what the hell is this? I, I made such a shift and now these things happen so that I didn't understand very good. And, and not, my week continued like that, like uh, obstructions. Mm -hmm. and, um, so, but, so here's the deal when you have stuff like that happen, and this is for everybody. So if you have a truck brought, blocking the road, you know, your road is your journey, right? And so what is the truck? Go on to Google and do spiritual symbolism of a truck. Yes. And, and so look at that and see what it says. And, you know, sometimes you'll get different explanations. So if the first one's, if it doesn't resonate for you, read a couple of more, you know, uh, different websites because they'll all pop up on, you know, on your Google search. I cannot tell you the universe is constantly talking to us. It's constantly giving us signs. So when that happens, instead of going, oh, what's going on? I, you know, like, it, why is this happening to me? Instead say, wow, universe, what are you trying to tell me? Mm -hmm. Okay, see the shift in the energy just in that? I mean, why is this happening to me is a victim mentality. And what is the universe trying to show me is an empowerment mentality. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. It's cool, huh? Mm -hmm. yes. so keep, keep doing that work, girl. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. I am so proud of you. That is awesome. I love that you show up every week and you share and it's just amazing to, to hear all the shifts you're having. So yay, I'm so excited. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'm going to ask you to mute yourself and then we are going to kind of wind this up. I just want to see what else is here on the chat. Um, so uh, Daniela said, thank you, Terry. So helpful. We'll do the process with the replay. I should do the course the second time different things will come up when, when then over a year. Absolutely. If you have the course, Daniela, then I want to invite you to do it again. Um, and, you know, and you may do like Ann said, where she got a hit that she needed to go listen to session three, um, audio three, because there's, there's three major audios in each session. So there's like 18 audios. And, um, and so, you know, that's what she did. She listened to her intuition. So if you've done the course fully, then I would say go to it. If you feel like you want to start from the beginning, go back to the beginning. Or if you want to say, okay, where am I being guided to go? What meditation am I needing to, what is my soul asking me to listen to and do it that way? You know, use it as an Oracle type thing. Okay, let me see what else is here. So Eileen said, no coincidences. Eileen Ann, e oh, she's doing numerology. It says three E's, one N, and two N's plus one E. In, in numerology, E and N equal communication, and Mercury is retrograde now. Wow, brings it right up, doesn't it? Thank you, Ann. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, guys. Um, she, says, she said, thank you, Sydney. So let's just wrap this up, and let's close our eyes for a moment, giving thanks to everyone who showed up today. You are such courageous women leaders of love. I'm so grateful for each one of you taking a stand for loving yourselves, owning your worth, so that you become the change that we're wanting to see in this world of more peace and joy and empowerment. So I just give thanks to all of you. And I ask that you say yes, even more so to loving yourselves and that maybe you take a moment right now after this call and write down any thoughts, anything that stuck with you that you want to bring into your life on a daily basis. So let's just say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Give your inner child a big hug, a big squeeze, say I love you. And from this day forward, you are my appendage and I'm gonna to talk to you all the time. So have a beautiful day and uh, thank you everyone for being here. 
Much love. See you next week. Same time, same place. Bye-bye.